had a lot going on this past week. A uh, couple back-to-back -back matches with uh, with a really good Arkansas team at their place. Uh, first first match saw a, uh, a school record of attendance for them. I think they doubled their previous high or came pretty close to it. Uh, and fought and battled and, and squeaked out a five-set win. Uh, great great win for us. And then turn around and play the next night and and sweep them. Uh, in front of another really good crowd, uh, just a really successful road trip. Yesterday, I just thought it was a kind of a special day. You know, you're you're dropping a uh, a Big Ten banner and and uh, and playing against a, a really good uh, Tennessee team, another ranked team, and um, uh, and then squeezing out a five set win. A uh, lot, lot to take. Or, you know, we've been digging in on film for, for quite a while. Uh, there's, there's a lot, a lot of stuff there for us, which is awesome. Yeah, just talking about the Arizona, uh, Arkansas, Arizona, Arkansas trip. Um, yeah. You know, going to five, five sets like that. What do you feel like you learned about your team, and then turning around and getting a sweep after that? I mean, what does that say about this group and, and what you guys were able to do down there? There, there was, a, there was a lot from uh, night one to night two. I, you know, sometimes when you're playing teams early on, you, you're not. <laughs> it's a. Uh, uh, we had a, we got a lot better feel, feel on uh, how to how to defend them, how to serve, how they're going to block us. You, you know, we had. We had two matches on them going in, and there were some things they did against us that they hadn't even shown the, the previous two. So we're kind of ignoring some things, and they, they were able to have a little bit of success, uh, you know, going back and being able to, to watch uh, night one and, and implement things into night two was, was obviously really important. Um, it, uh, you know, and the, you know, I, I one thing we're, we're changing our lineup quite a bit and having some people in different positions, and there's some there's some give and take with that. Some of the good is is uh, you know we're taking a lot of, of information. Probably one of the poor things, especially with our sport, is there's a continuity thing that happens when you're sticking with with lineups, and so we know we're giving up. Uh, uh, a little bit of the continuity and and uh, the flow of the game right now. It, we, we'd probably be into that space a little bit sooner if we would stick with with uh, with positions and, and lineups. But uh, we feel like for the long run, uh, which you know, fortunately with our sport, it's you know, it, it's not a lose one and your your hopes and dreams are dashed for the rest of the season. So we we can evolve and uh, and that's that's kind of how we're approaching things right now. Kelly, uh, you kind of touched last week on, you know, some of the sometimes the challenges of, of scheduling matches and, yeah. and and filling out a non-conference schedule. I guess along the lines of maybe the science of building a non-conference schedule. I guess I'm wondering. I assume obviously you're looking for good competition. Yeah. Th does it go as far as you looking for certain types of teams? Hey, this team might test us this way, or this team might test us that way, or is it just too difficult to put all those together and come out with a, you know. Yeah, I, I would I would like to do that. I mean, certainly I spent some thought in that. But, uh, um, you know, there's also an element of it, when it gets right down to it, there are some of the teams you, you get what you can take a, a little bit as, as well. Um, you know, we're trying to schedule the absolute best teams we can. Uh, we have never said no um, to elite competition uh, ever. It's, uh, if, if, some, if, if an elite team wants to play us or a really good team wants to play us, we, we're, we're game for it, um, home or on the road. And, uh, you, you know, I think up to this point, we played, what, five matches, and four of them have been against ranked teams, and, and the other one was a receiving votes team. So, I mean, it's, we're playing some really good teams um, and uh, who are very different from, me, from, um, uh, from, from each other. So it's, it's allowing us to get a lot of information. It's, it's challenging us in a lot of different ways, which, which we're excited, and we've got some big-time competition. 
over these next two weeks before we even get to the Big Ten. I mean, that's, I think um, uh, when it gets right down to it, I think we'll have six, six of our eight non-conference opponents will be ranked, and I think uh, or five or six, and or no, because we'll play uh, we'll play nine, right? Play nine. So I think six of six of the nine are ranked, and two others are receiving votes, and so we're 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 playing some some good competition. But yeah, I mean we're we're putting thought into. Uh, to our, our scheduling, but I'd say most of it is let's just try to play the best we can. My question's kind of in that same vein. Um, last week you talked about not really being a fan of the back-to-back -back, uh, schedules, not the COVID year. You said that was kind yeah. of a different one. But can you just assess you know, how game two was different from game one because of that back-to-back -back nature? Yeah. It's a um, – uh, yeah, our, I mean – it. it I mean, it, it, I think both teams, we're very fortunate that Arkansas allowed us to, to play two matches. I mean, we're, you know, very fortunate. I think it helped both of our, both of our teams. Um, we'd rather see different types of teams, but it's a, uh, um, but there was certainly an advantage of that. It was an advantage for them uh, to be able to uh, play us on back-to-back. -back. It, it, uh, there was an advantage for us. Uh, one of the things that you learn is how quickly can can players um, make adjustments from one night to the next. Can there be a learning thing? Is there a uh, is there a hunger to you know to you you squeak out a, a five setter and you're going back and playing another late team the next day? Do you you know are you satisfied or are you uh, are you hungry for more? Not you know that's something we learned from from this group. So. Uh, I'd rather do uh, not do that, but there is a lot of advantages to be able to do it. I, we, I think both both programs got a lot out of it. Uh, you've talked about the improvements that uh, Gul J has made uh, communicating on the floor, but when she's in that DS role alongside a libero, is the communication different in that role? Like, does she have to, you know, like with the libero kind of leading things on the defensive side, does that you know change how she has to communicate with people? It, it's a, uh, I mean, it, it's. Uh, We've got to get more consistent play um, out of out of our backcourt, not not just her libero position, but but our backcourt. Period. Um, it's uh, um, it, it, Yuli has played, and we uh, a, a couple matches in that, and it's it's a different deal. She's playing left back and middle back, and and part of what she gets her en energy from is is from attacking, and so it's a it's a different deal, and and being able to lead. Uh, back there, um, you know, and, and her personality, is, especially when when uh, Gulche has been back there, she's been kind of the stronger personality. And now if she's in the DS, it's there's this, all right, well, who's kind of in charge uh, of this That's that, that we've got to get kind of figured out. Uh, one of the things I love about, um, you know, Gulche yesterday is that every time she had a poor pass, I think every time that next ball she just stuck it. I don't think the the setters were even moving. Uh, the problem is, is she she got there's too many balls that came at her that we couldn't get swings on, and so it's it's got to be consistent. Um, you know, her her passing numbers were were okay, but it just we just got aced too many times, and and um, it, you know, but. We had other people that were uh, that were uh, had similar issues. They just weren't targeted as, as as much as she was, and so we gave away too many points. Now, with that said, that we were facing some elite servers on the other side of the net, and there were some balls that just no matter what, it just it, you put any passer back here, and they're just. I mean, I've got. You know, in my mind, I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was the third or the fifth set. I know we were on our star side, and there was just a ball that just dropped off the table that n nobody is passing. It was just such a, a, a filthy serve. But um, 12 times is too much for a team, and we've got we've to certainly clean that up um, to come away and, and win a match and hit over 300 while having that many reception errors is, is a real credit to some other things, but that's – it uh, still remains to be a work in progress, certainly. I seem to remember that you switched the libero jersey at the end of the match, uh, yeah. or towards the end of the match. What, why did you feel like you needed to make that switch? Uh, it's a, uh, 
it you know hindsight's 2020 in a lot lot of cases but it's a um um you know i i think the thought at the time is is do we make a switch and does that does that elevate the whole i i guess is is probably one of the things that we're thinking at the time but it's you know, one of the cool things is that, you know, when we're making some of these uh, uh, adjustments or, or decisions, uh, we're, we're taking this as, as information to be learned uh, as, as we're moving forward. I mean, this isn't th- things that we sit there and say, oh, we shouldn't have done this or we should have done this. Um, we're just not in that space right now where it's, it's all right in this situation, we learned this as a coaching staff and uh, in, in carrying that forward and moving moving forward. Okay. Kelly, you're coming off, you know, three matches against ranked opponents. And then, you know, next week, maybe you're not looking ahead, but you have those two matches against mm-hmm. ranked opponents, one at Pfizer. Is there any time this week where you need to remind your group that we have two matches here to kind of get them locked in? Or does this group doesn't need that. Uh, I I would say that you get to be really really good at that. It's it's one of the things that's an advantage of our um, uh, 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 of the schedule that we play in the conference that we play because you have it, it, every week you've got somebody that is that's maybe one of the top tens in in the country, top 25. I mean, every every week you're playing somebody that's like that. So it really forces you to not look ahead in the calendar, you you know, while you're playing all these, you know, teams that aren't any good. But here's one three weeks from now. Let's lock in on – that's going to be so much fun when we get to that. It's – uh, that was one of the things I learned. You, you know, when I was at at Dayton, we certainly we played some really good teams when I was coaching there. But when you got in conference play, you could go a few weeks before playing somebody that was elite, and so you can kind of, you know, you had maybe something circled down the road, and you could train through what you have right now. The Big Ten doesn't allow that, so these players that are that have been here for a few years, that they're kind of used to, you know, every week has has some things at, at stake. Um, so, although the Pfizer match, and I, I, I heard this morning that we're only there's only a few hundred tickets that they're expecting that to be even more fans there than the Cole Center match, um, you know, and then you got Florida uh, after that, but maybe playing as well or better than anybody in the country right now. Um, that those are some two really good stuff uh, things, but you know we've got two home matches against Arizona and, and Miami, like you said, and. Those are pretty good programs with pretty good, pretty good coaches. Uh, I, I think we'll be uh, where we need to be. Um, a couple of things. One, uh, going real quick on the on the match with Marquette. You said, um, from what you understand, a few hundred tickets are left. Is that right? Okay. Um, and then, as far as a couple of the scheduling things, I was, I was curious of now in terms of home and away. Like you know, some sports here, there's a you know, responsibility, so to speak, you know, to, to bring in fans and you got to kind of have a certain number of home games. And I guess I'm wondering, is, is that the case with volleyball or do you have, you know, really have complete freedom to, you know, if a team says, hey, we can only play you on the road this year to kind of, you know, do do things like that? Uh, yeah, I didn't hold up my end of the bargain. I should have had more home matches th- this year. And um, uh, so it's uh, – uh, especially, f- you know, filling in the field house. The, those are some things that uh, we weren't able to do. That was a failure on my part of only being able to get three non-conference. And so we like to have at least four uh, uh, here. Uh, so that's always the goal of, goal of having at least that. Okay. Um, and then with Arizona and Miami, I'm just curious, were there, are there any connections – there, I didn't see any like in-state players or any players that I recognized on either roster. But from a coaching standpoint, are there any connections there that maybe helped, you know, these matchups happen? No, it was. Uh, hey, you want to play? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so one thing that. You guys have always had the advantage on is the size of your block, um, and Arkansas specifically. You know they have that one five seven outside hitter. That, yeah. You know, 
did a lot of damage. I mean, yeah. what have some smaller, you know, players at that position been trying to counter, I guess, some of the, you know, larger blocks that you could put together and, you know, some of the size that you have around the net? You know, we had, uh, back in the day, you, you were probably still in junior high, but we had a player named Demi Morales that some of the other people in the room might remember. She led us to the national championship match as a five, seven and a half outside hitter, and that kid was a warrior. I mean, just a... Um, she didn't hit for Demi didn't hit for a high percentage, but she just she took really she was an emotional leader for us, and that warrior mentality had everybody saying, "Let's stay in the fight," and that's worth that's worth something. That's worth p real points, I think, out in matches because it elevates everybody else. She was just fearless when she'd go up there and see big blocks and, you know, she'd go and look for hands and when there was a hole, she's going in there hammering the, the hole and, and she'd get some block, you know, get blocked along the way and just come right back out and and um, just it, it never affected the next ball. Um, the kid that you're talking about from Arkansas uh, was very similar to that. It, uh, you know, would go up there and, and blast high hands or, or, you know, work the outside of the block. And when there was a hole, she was going to make you pay. Uh, it was it was tough. I mean, it was – it's a um, – our block was in one altitude and her swings were at a different altitude. And she was finding the low seam on us and we would, you know – up higher, we had four hands up in there, but we weren't able to get our hands into that space where she was hitting. And we, it, uh, and I think night one, she took a lot of, had a lot of kills. I don't think it was a very high hitting percentage, but she took a lot of swings and her mentality raised everybody. And when you have players that are just fearless, uh, it, in the game, it it rises every it brings everybody up. I mean, she's there's other people on that team that were a higher hitting percentage, not only in those matches but overall. But she's the one that r brings everybody else up with them. And those are some of the things that we try to pull out of some of our players. That Demi certainly was. Is that you know how do you respond and just be fearless and just you know uh, be able to to play the whole game and work the entire court. And just over and over and over again, just keep punching, and and that kid certainly has that mentality. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the uh, so one one of the things we would talk about in that it's a great question. It's something that we were trying to hammer home again last night. It was a constant reminder: is is you've got to you've got to get your hands across further and lower. And sometimes when you have these bigger players and you're trying to make some big block moves, uh, their hands are are pretty high and. Uh, uh, and they've got to go and get the ball rather than just getting their hands up into airspace. Um, some teams are, are having a little bit of success hitting lower the net, which is weird because as attackers, you're, as coaches, you're trying to get people to hit the ball high above the net, as high as you can. Uh, but that's actually where our hands are uh, with this team. And so it's hard to, to, uh, to get kills when you're reaching against us. It's probably a little bit easier when you're hitting a little bit lower the tape, which is the exact opposite of what we're typically teaching. Uh, our blockers have to make a little bit better adjustment of, of staying low and tight when we're playing players like that.